There's no way Matt Ryan should have got it over me. But in my mind, I want it. You know, that's my, yeah. he, he has it at his place, but that's, that's my Heisman Trophy. Should Reggie Bush <laughs> have his? Without a doubt. Adrian Peterson, welcome to the Courts Eye Club. Thank you so much for joining me today. No problem, thanks for having me. We met at the Travis Scott Celebrity Softball Game. You were our first baseman, that was really fun. Mm -hmm. Had a good time. Seeing you in a different element than I feel most people are used to. Yeah. Um, one thing I, I have to bring up before we even start though, I heard online about your handshake and I realize I've never, <laughs> Am I? I'm, I'm on to something, right? Yeah, yeah. There's been multiple people who have said that you have like the firmest handshake mm -hmm. that anyone has ever felt. Yeah. And I've yet to shake your hand. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> not, not too bad. Not too bad. <laughs> not too bad. Took it easy on me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not gonna crush your hand like that. Did you learn that growing up? Was that something Southern <laughs> thing? Grew up in Texas. Yeah. I think uh, just growing up here in Texas, and I grew up with seven uncles in a small town of Palestine, Texas. Yeah. You know, and they always w were really rough with me. And when, you know, the kids would be around, they would always tell us, hey, when you meet someone, when you meet, when you meet a man, look him, in the eye, look him in the eye and give him a firm handshake. So from a young age, <laughs> I've always did that. Like when I met people, I try to squeeze their hand really hard and just, you know, um, and it's something that just kind of stuck with me. You've made a lasting impression on many. Yeah. My, the firmest handshake where I literally felt like my hand was gonna break was actually Tiger Woods. Yeah. That was, yeah. that was something. And his <laughs> hands also, by the way, he's actually a smaller guy. You think of him as a larger than life type of guy, obviously, cause he is the Tiger Woods, but he's yeah. not that tall. And his hands weren't that big, but it was like. It's good firm anyway, shape. You'd be holding yeah. on clubs. Tight yeah, now. yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about football a little bit. You grew up in Texas. Mm. Um, when did you start playing football? So I started playing, um, before I started playing organized football, it was just throw up tackle. Backyard, yeah. Know, backyard football. So I've been playing since like five, you know, but I started playing organized football at the age of seven. When was that moment that you knew this was it for you? This was your calling, this mm -hmm. was your passion? You know, honestly, I always had a feeling that, um, that football was my calling. Um, I've always, even at a young age, told myself, I'm playing in the NFL one day. I'm playing in the NFL, I'm playing in the NFL. So that was something that I had my mind wrapped around at a young age and just going up a different, against different competition. There in Palestine, even though it's a small, small town, at the end of the season, um, the, the winningest team would take, um, would gather some of the other players you know, like an all-star team. Okay. And we would go to Texarkana and we would play team from Georgia, you know, from surrounding states. Yeah. And we went there two years in a row and won, and won both years. And I feel like that's kind of when I realized that, man, you know what? I'm going against kids from Georgia, kids from Alabama, you know, Louisiana, wherever they're from. And, um, you know, I'm doing the same thing <laughs> that yeah. I was doing against the kids back, back in Palestine. Uh, so that's when I knew, okay, you know, I think my talent level is on, on a, a little different than others. The South is different for football. I mm -hmm. grew up in the Midwest, and I feel like we were definitely, you know, basketball, football, state, a little mm -hmm. bit of baseball, but there's a different energy when it comes to Texas football, Southern football, and you even see that going on to college with Georgia, Bama, Texas. Mm -hmm. There's something different in the water, in the player's blood. <laughs> like yeah. runs through in these states. Um, was there anybody who inspired you growing up? Yeah, um, LaDainian Thomason was a guy that uh, I love, you know, watching him play, you know, when he was at TCU. And of course, making it to, you know, making it to the NFL. Um, I know in high school, you know, Cedric Benson, he was a guy that played at the University of Texas that was from Midland Lee. And uh, so just watching him and um, whatnot. But I would say LT and Ricky Williams, you know, in, in my, you know, my older years, like in high school, yeah. those were the guys that I watched. And it was like, okay, 
like that's how you you run the ball, especially Ricky Williams. He, you know, he was so physical, um, just a different specimen. You know, when he, when he was out there on the field um, or whatnot. But um, Eric Dickinson was a guy. You know, I had to look his stuff up. You know, but I always got comparisons to to Eric Dickinson because we were both taller backs. Um, both were like track athletes and ran straight up. Um, you know, so he was a guy that I looked at that was like, man, okay, you know, this guy is, is really special. Give me the percentage of how much natural athleticism, speed, quickness, strength mm -hmm. that you feel like was just in your DNA and how much you worked to be who you are. Yeah. Um, Football is a lot about athleticism, <laughs> you know what I mean? There, there's skill there as well. Yeah. But you need <clears throat> that. Yeah. So um, I don't want to discredit my hard work because I, I know that's what separated me, but I, I, was, I was born with it. You know, like I was gifted. Um, my mom, like, and a lot of people see my dad, my dad's like 6'4", 230. Yeah. And they see my pops and they be like, man, okay, we see why he's, you know, he's so big and, you know, has nice size. But then like no one really sees my mom's side of the family, which my mom, she was 11 and three in high school. This was like back in the eighties. You know, um, really, really fast. I had an uncle that high jumped seven one in high school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I broke all his records at Palestine High School. That 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 stayed until I broke it. So I would say it's definitely just the the God given ability. But the one thing that I always locked in on was there was a sign in our our um, our weight room that said hard work outdoes talent when talent doesn't work hard. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, so for me, I knew I had the talent. I wanted to make sure no one outworked me. Yeah. So I, I, I truly believe that is what separated me from, from everybody else. I didn't have much of any natural athletic <laughs> ability. <laughs> I had to work so hard. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like to be a great, you need those two to interlock. And yeah. do you think that you could have gone places with track? Yeah, without a doubt. That was my, that was my, my, like my smile. It was one, like a one B. Like I, I really, really love track. And, and a lot of people don't know this. I've shared it before, but my, going into my junior year, I, I told myself I was done playing football. I was just going to focus on track. Yeah. And then I talked to my dad one day. Um, my dad was, in, was incarcerated. He got locked up um, going into the summer of my sixth, seventh grade year. And, but he was the one like put the ball in my hand, you know. He was a beast too. He was a Mickey D's All American in basketball. Played at Ohio State. Got cool. drafted by the Ohio State. Yeah, Idaho cool. State. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but he told me, he said, "Son, I know you can be the best running back in the country, but you got to go out there and show people." So that that yeah. right there was what is what made me get back into into football. But I was a sprinter. I ran the hundred, two hundred. Um, I got second in at state. I ran a 10-3, 10 3, 10, 3, 3. If I really would have like locked in and actually went to school to yeah. run, I think this guy would have been a limit for me. Let's move on to your college days. Mm -hmm. You you left Texas, went to Oklahoma. I want to talk about the state of college athletics right now, because I feel like from the time that you were in college, I was in college, college athletics has changed a lot, yeah. especially with NIL. Um, and all these different deals for these kids. Now, how do you feel about the current state of NIL and college mm -hmm. sports? I really like it. You know, I wish they had it when I when I came out. I, know, right? <laughs> I quit after my first year. I was like, I would have stayed and played four years of basketball if <laughs> we had NIL. <laughs> you got no right. You get paid. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, but I love it because I, I understand the business side of it. Mm -hmm. So I know how much the university. How much, how much they're making right. off of these athletes, student athletes. Yeah. So it's like, why not give them a piece of the pie? You know, so I love it. Um, I was talking to my dad about it, and the only thing I, I really haven't, but it's the trans, it's like people can get in that portal and they move yeah, to different. Yeah, that's so different. That's the thing that I just like, ah, you know, it's kind of iffy, but. Because for you, it was like you had to sit out of here, right? Yeah. That's, yeah. Mm hmm and now it is, because I think one thing about college sports, the thing that makes it so great, and sometimes even better than pro, is the rivalries mm -hmm. are there. And a lot of times it is because of kids 
staying and football isn't as much of, of a one and done as basketball is. I feel like that's why men's basketball on the co- in the college side is harder to follow along unless we get somebody like a Zion or this big star, you know, mm-hmm. or Bronny James or something. Um, but if you have kids being able to just, you know, jump ship, go to another, you know, yeah. we had that at Ohio State with our quarterback. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like, okay, well, here we are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we had Deborah Caleb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't like it, but then again, it's like, I've seen situations where, and I've heard about situations where um, certain players didn't get that opportunity they felt they deserved. Yeah. So having that ability to be like, okay, I'm gonna go somewhere else where, you know, they're saying, saying, a little, saying something a little different. I'm, yeah. gonna have, I'm gonna have this opportunity <laughs> to get out there and compete for, for a starting job. You never know, that might birth, you know, another Eli Manning, or you never know what type of player it, sure. could, it could birth. So I like it from that sense. I think ultimately <clears throat> the colleges, they'll do what they need to do to keep their, their players there. And, you know, typically when you got these, you know, these players that's like the top running backs and quarterbacks in the country, you know, they should be pretty set with yeah. where they end up going. Um, you know, so I, I don't think it'll, it'll, it'll be too bad. Can we talk about the Dion effect? <laughs> <laughs> so, time. yeah. And I've, I've heard you say in other mm-hmm. interviews that he was one of your favorite players and yeah. he's obviously had super high praise for you as well. Yeah. Um, we, my boyfriend actually did go to Colorado. We went to two of those games mm-hmm. this past season. Insane. L- Little Wayne is there, you know, LeBron's, it's all these different celebrities. Yeah. Um, it's completely packed house. There's so much hype over, you know, a team who isn't there yet. How do you see Colorado panning out and what Dion can kind of do to build that program? Yeah, I um, I think the sky's the limit. You know, Coach Prime, man, he's he's just, he's different. You know, he's a one of a kind type player. You know, he yeah. was he was the best to ever do it. You know, he was my my all time favorite player growing up. Do you think the goat? Yeah, without a doubt, hands down. Some of the things that he did, he played offense, defense, special teams. He did, he did everything, yeah. and he did it at a high level. He was the best at it. So it's not it's not surprising to me that he's able to, you know, they say that with the prime effect. It's not surprising because everyone loves him, you know. Everyone has respect re- respect for him. And it wasn't just how he played, it was his personality as well. Yeah. You know, he wasn't, I never thought he was cocky, but he always showed that confidence, his confidence level was always here. Yeah. You know, so when you bring that into a college atmosphere and you got these kids that, you know, they grow up watching Dion, everyone praises Dion. And then not only that, they're seeing what he's able to do what he did in Jackson State and now what he's doing in Colorado, you know, it's it's an extra incentive. You know, it's, it's a perk to, to to go to a university where you know you're going to be able to compete on a high level. Right. You're going to get some of the top recruits and you're going to be coached well. You know, you might have a couple NFL players, NFL coaches on the roster, you know, mm-hmm. that's coaching that team because of the connections that, that right. Dion has. True. And uh, so I think the sky's the limit. I feel like here in the next year, if not even sooner. That was going to be my next question. Yeah. When mm-hmm. when are they going to be in that contender spot? Mm-hmm. How many years is it going to take? You know, based on what I've seen, and um, I would say once they, when they start getting, I think they're in the process of doing this. Once they get that meat up, in, you know, up in the front, Pause. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? Pause. You know, offensive line, yeah. the defense interior, those guys. Uh, once they get some bigger guys, some top guys in that that spot, they got they have the skill players offensively and yeah. defensively, based on what I've seen. Uh, but when you're going up against the S, uh, you know, the SEC, you got teams like LSU, Alabama, Georgia. You know, like you need some guys that's going to be able to. The one thing I know, without an offensive line. And with our offensive line, there was nothing that I could do. You know, I was able to do a little bit, but I needed offensive line for sure. Mm-hmm. And I know on the defense side, they needed you need a defensive line. You know, right? Um, so you know, I, I played since I was seven years old, and it's always been there, been that offensive line and defensive line. You need to have those guys, um, you know, in the right position. 
and then you can then you'll be able to get something done. Yeah, we'll have to see. Yeah, it's definitely a cultural shift, and it's really fun to watch. I'm rooting for him as well because it seems like he has a different sort of love for his players too. Mm -hmm. I think in college sports, and I kind of felt this with my experience as well. Sometimes as an athlete, you feel ex expendable in mm -hmm. a way, and coaches just want you to make sure they can win at the end of the day. Whatever else you got going on, they don't really care that much. Make sure you perform on the field, the court, whatever. It doesn't seem like Dion feels that way about his kids. Like he actually wants to shape them into real men. Yeah. To be successful in you know in every space. And that's what separates him, because he understands. He has that chemistry. He, he's, you know, he got boys. He he played in the league. You know, he went mm -hmm. to college, and you know, so automatically you get that. You know, you get you get respected even more, but you can tell how he coached and how he talks to these kids, the people that he brings in to speak life into these kids. Yeah. That he really cares about them. You know, of course, any coach you want to win. You know, that's yeah. the objective. I want to win. <laughs> but you can you can tell um, that these kids love him and they'll they'll do anything for him. Heisman has been brought up quite a bit because mm -hmm. Reggie Bush still isn't getting it back. Yeah. And there's been a lot of players and and media who have been outspoken about that and kind of stood behind him because obviously the landscape of college athletics now. How do you feel about that? And also I know you were uh second in voting, right? 2004? Yeah. Yeah. Do you kind of feel a certain way about that? <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. I see the look on your face. I do. Yeah. You know, and that was around the time where a freshman couldn't really win it, you know. Yeah. Um, and it just really, it really sucked to, cause I knew the night before that I wasn't winning it. Okay. I had two people. I can speak. Just because of politics. Uh, I knew that, but then I had someone come up up and tell me that I had already. He was a Heisman Trophy winner. He was one of the guys. He was like, man, huh. they're just not ready to give it to a freshman. So I was just like, God, man, I'm doing all these So politics, things. essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. there's no way Matt Lyon should have got it over me. Yeah. You know, coming in the type of year that I had um, as a true freshman, I don't, you know, I don't see how he, you know, he got it. I, In my mind, I know it was politics, and I'm sure they were like, well, you know, he has a couple more years. He'll probably get one, you know. And so this took the opportunity away from me. But in my mind, I won it. You know, that's my, yeah. he, he has it at his place, but that's that's my Heisman Trophy. That's yours? Yeah. Should Reggie Bush <laughs> has have his? Without a doubt. Yeah, he deserves it, man. You think about the type of season he had <sighs> the entire time he was there. But that, that Heisman year, there was, there was nobody out there on the field that was better than Reggie. You know, just electrifying everything that he was able to do and you know, help lead his team to championships. Yeah, he, he definitely deserves that. Deserve his Heisman back. They they have to at some point, <clears> right? I don't think. I so. mean, there's so much pushback against it at this point. It just seems insane. Yeah. For it not. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't. You're I don't, more in the know than I am in yeah. that football space, which is me being as a fan and seeing how NIL is now, mm -hmm. seeing how college athletics is, seeing how much these certain awards mean to players. In NFL and in college, mm -hmm. you know, like that means that's yeah very meaningful. Very much so. That's something that you still, <laughs> you know, we still talk about yeah. <laughs> well into your thirties now. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah, I, I think at some point he'll get it back. Yeah. Um, I think pride has a lot to do with it right now, you know, because you know you're wrong. <laughs> you know, you see how the NIL is, and yeah. you know, like. Just take the L. Come yeah, on. just take the L. <laughs> Give this man his trophy. Give him his trophy back, man. He, yeah. he deserves it. Man, I have nothing but respect for Reggie and just his ability. And, you know, I don't care if he was, I don't care what was happening. You know, like the NIL is here now. And it was the NIL before the NIL, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. just, just be real. But that doesn't affect what the young man did on the field. You know what I'm saying? For sure. So. I feel like at some point they'll bite the bullet and, you know, and ship it back to them. Sure. I hope so. I want to talk more about your NFL career and beyond in the second half. But here on Courtside Club, we like to take a halftime break. Mm -hmm. And I have a little game of starting fives for you. So we have starting fives, but we're going to 
throwing some football things in there. So I want to hear your starting five NFL running backs of all time. Starting five. Yep. Okay. You're allowed to be on these lists. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> um, I'll say my starting five. Okay, I'll put myself on there. Okay. Barry Sanders. Um, um, Herschel Walker. I mean, not Herschel Walker, but um, Peyton. Uh, Walter Peyton. Okay. Uh, ooh wee. I gotta go with Jim Brown. And I'm missing one. This took too much time. Now, I've always said Bo Jackson. Uh, because he was just he was just freakish, man, you know? Four and four one nine, like he he did. This it all. is this is also your list. This doesn't have yeah. to be Yeah, you know? so this is your starting So point. I'm going uh Bo Jackson and then L T right there, but Dan Thomason. Okay, so they're So that's five. Sweet. That's six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he come out <laughs> one either one of them come off the bench. Okay, yeah. got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're starting five current NFL players. This can be any position. Any position? Any position. Okay. Okay. Um, right now, Patrick Mahomes, um, Trent Williams. Okay. Uh, Christian McCaffrey. Okay. Would you think he would ever make your starting five all time? I, I think he has the potential to. Potential? Okay. Yeah. yeah. AJ Green. No, AJ Brown. Okay. Okay. And uh, I said I need defensive player. All time? Oh, you're talking about current? Current. Okay. Um, well, I'm thinking that he just retired, Aaron Donald. He did, yeah. 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 I wanted to put him on there. <laughs> it's close. Yeah. <laughs> current. We need a current player. <laughs> Let's see who else defensively. Because I need to get a defensive guy. Uh, I'll probably say you. Ramsey, I go. I'll, I'll go. I'll go with DB. Jay okay, Jalen Ramsey. Yeah, not bad. We're gonna flip to basketball now. Okay, that's cool with you. Starting five NBA players of all time. Again, this is your list. Yeah. Ooh. Michael Jordan. Okay. Um, that's your go. I'm assuming. Yeah. 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 Oh, There's yeah. still the debate. Yeah. So it's, 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 okay. You yeah, know, basketball player, yeah, Jordan. Okay. You know, best athlete ever to play, LeBron James. You know, this was my opinion. This size and six. Do you think two, best two, athlete of all sports, LeBron James? Uh, best athlete of all time, or just no, in, in just, the sport just, of basketball? Just sport of basketball. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So, so Michael Hardy. Jordan, we got the um, LeBron James, we got um, Kobe Bryant. Cool. We got, we got Shaq. Perfect. And then, oh, so many great players out there. I'm gonna go with uh, Steph. You gonna put Steph on there? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's a six starting five. Like my favorite basketball player of all time is Reggie Miller. Is it? Yeah. And so I gotta put Steph. You gotta on put there. a shooter on there. Yeah. For sure. And I gotta put since Steph is the goat now. I gotta oh, shooting. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Moving on to your NFL career, what was your welcome to the NFL moment? Mm -hmm. Did you have one? Uh, you know, um, outside of having to carry pads and stuff at training camp, <laughs> I would say- uh, Was that your rookie season? Yeah, yeah. I would say uh, against Chicago, we was playing my rookie year. We were playing um, at Soldier Field and I'll never forget walking up to the line up the play call and seeing Bridge and Erlacher. And I'm just like, God, like, when I tell you these guys were huge, you know, <laughs> 6'4", 250 pounds, like both of them. Yeah. And it was, uh, I think it was, it was an inside zone play that was called. And the, the whole open and just like that, bam, it was just, they just stuff, they stuffed me. You know, <laughs> and uh, it was just like that. Okay, you know, I remember. I think it was Erlach or said something. Like, all right, come on, Rook. We're gonna be here all day. You know, something real smooth, nothing, yeah. like kind of cocky. But and I remember the next play that I got. It was the outside zone play, and 
I ran for maybe like 10 to 15 yards. Mm-hmm. And Erlacher was on the tackle and I ended up falling forward. And uh, I just remember getting up and looking at him and Bridge as they were walking back to the huddle. And I could just see it in their eyes that they were like, okay. You know, this He's kid, legit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, so it was that moment. And That's cool. I think I went on for like 225 yards and uh, had the, I was doing a kickoff return at that time. And I had the uh, game, I set up, I, I broke one for like 60 yards and set up the game winning field goal. Oh, cool. You know, so yeah, it was pretty. That was pretty cool. So you were re- you were ready for it right away. Yeah. At least mentality. What I'm hearing is your m- mentality was there. Yeah. And that's sometimes I feel like a learning curve for a younger player. And why vets, even if they don't have the same you know physicality that they did when they were younger, their mindset is that they're ready for those situations to happen. Mm-hmm. You were ready that first season. Yeah, I, I was <laughs> ready. I remember being at the rookie premiere and. Um, and doing interviews and stuff. And I, I, can't, I can't remember the reporter, but they, this person might remember this, but he was sitting down, he was sitting down, he was asking me questions. So how do you feel like you're gonna do in the NFL? You know, once you get drafted, you know, it's gonna be the things yeah. gonna be, what do you think the bigger difference is gonna be? Or, you know, whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> I just had confidence. I wasn't being cocky. I was just like, you know, I feel like I'll be able to make a, a smooth transition. You know, you think about the speed of the game. Like I was a 10 to six in a hundred. You know, four three, like so. I had speed, you know, um, and it wasn't too many guys that had like elite speed like that that was in the NFL. So I'm just like, okay, speed wise, I got it. Um, the you know the physical aspect of the game, you know, I feel like I got it too. I see guys that are, you know, way smaller than me. I was like two seventeen, two eighteen mm-hmm. at the time. So I, I knew physically that I would be, I would be okay. And I remember. You know, he was just like, well, you know, it's just, it's just going to be a little different. You know, and I was <laughs> like, I'm sure it is, but I got this. I got this. You know? Yeah. So it was always just that confident and that confidence and knowing that, you know, I was gifted and, you know, I was blessed. And my, my work ethic is what allowed me to have, have that confidence and back it up. So 14 seasons, 14, yeah. which is insane for an NFL career. What do you think was that key thing that led to your longevity in the league? Mm-hmm. And really not having much of a drop off anywhere in mm-hmm. that time, besides maybe your injury, but again, injuries come with the game. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I'm very spiritual and I have, a, <clears throat> I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, you know, so that's a mind frame thing. And it's it's kind of cliche to some people because you can just simply say I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Mm-hmm. But if you really, you know, dive into that for what it is and stand on it, then you'll be able to see that you're you're really able to do some incredible things that will make people on the outside question this or be like, wow, I wonder how she did this or how he did that, how he was able to overcome this. So I would say it, it was based on me having the understanding that, you know, yeah, I'm putting in the physical work, but I have someone who's over me and watching me that's allowing me to, you know, have this mentality to have this drive and have the confidence in knowing that, hey, if I'm, I'm speaking this and I'm believing this, then it's it's gonna come to pass, that's you know? Cool. So so that was the main thing, you know, just being blessed with, with that and having the longevity and and just, just the mindset of, and the passion, you know, um, that love for the game, you know, it's, it's, it's the ultimate driving force, you know, just having that love for going out there and just playing ball. So are you finished yet? Um, no, not in my heart. You know, I haven't officially retired or anything like that. Um, I still have passion and love for the game. Um, so guys, one, I get an opportunity, get an opportunity to, to get out there this year. Um, the one thing I've have, I have told myself is, if nothing happened this year, um, you know, I'll I'll go ahead and hang it up, and and, and move on. Um, but I never wanted to be that guy that's like forty, 
you know, I'm 39 now, just 40, 42, feeling like, hey, you know what? I still got some love in the tank, you know? And, yeah. And I didn't put my best foot forward or leave the door open for the opportunity. So we'll see. That's a, that's a hard decision to make, though, for professional athletes, deciding when that moment is mm -hmm. to hang it up. Because a lot of people, an injury decides it. Yeah. Not just not being good enough, not being fit enough, but feeling in your heart that you still have some left in you. It's hard to just be like, yeah, I'll retire, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Are you still training? Well, not as much. I, um, so my last injury that I had with Seattle, um, I had to give myself time. So I didn't work out for like a, a good year just to let my, my body rejuvenate and, and heal. Mm -hmm. And what injury was this? I had um, a pinched nerve. Okay. Pinch nerve, and to the point where, if I stepped out too far in front of me, yeah, it would it would shut down. Like I like I literally couldn't run for a good period of time, and um, they suggested surgery, and I opt out of it, out of the surgery, and just wanted to heal naturally, yeah, and not get cut on again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm I'm back to 100 percent now, feeling good, can run. You are. Do everything I need to do. Okay. You know, so. I saw an article, there was a rumor that some, it's called the UFL now, right? Mm -hmm. that XO, yeah. yeah. That some of those teams were actually eyeing you. Have you heard about that? Have you talked to anybody in that league? <laughs> I haven't talked to anyone. Okay. But um, I've had one or two people reach out that I know that's affiliated. It was like, hey, how are you feeling? Are you working out? What, what, you know, what, what are your thoughts? Yeah. And it, it didn't really go past that. Um, but, you know, I, I know that that would be an option if, if I wanted to do it. So if it weren't NFL, you would, you would consider? If it wasn't NFL, would I consider? Uh, probably not, to be honest with you. No? Okay. I'll, I, I'll probably get out there and run track or something. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do something active to get something my, active. To, to continue to challenge myself, uh, you know, just to do it because I know I, I still have a lot of talent. Of course. And left. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to see. Keep us posted. Okay. I'll be checking in. If there is any announcement or something. You better call Quartzite Club. Let us know. I'll let you know. Do I'll, you? I'll keep you in the loop. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to touch on it really quick. Um, a bigger injury that you did have in 2012. 12. Yeah, your ACL. That a lot of people, including I feel like your training staff coaches, didn't think that you would come back from that so quickly. In about eight months, Yeah. you came back. Eight months, yeah. And then after that, had one of the best seasons of your career. Yeah. How did you come back from that injury so quickly? <sighs> when that injury happened towards the end of the season, it was it was Christmas Eve, matter of fact. I remember being in the locker room after it happened and the trainers that was was there, I said, you know what? It is what it is, you know? And at that moment, I told myself that I was going to be back and I'm, I was going to be back and come back better than I was before. Because it ACL the was an LCL as well. So in that moment in my mind it was like this is it. This is what it this is what it is. So now the next step is okay. Guys willing I don't have any type of swelling that set that or delays my my surgery, but that's the next step getting the surgery done, making sure I go to the best doctor, getting the surgery done, and then start this journey on on coming back. Cause I, you know, I, I knew it was, I knew it was gonna be tough. I think that right there was the key. You know, like having faith and understanding that like I said earlier, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that's the mindset that I applied to coming back from this ACL. Cause people were saying, hey, oh he's done for, he's this, he's that. You yeah. know, everyone had an opinion. But I knew who has a final say so. I, I, mm -hmm. I, you know, I know who, who had allowed me to get to that point. And um, so that's the mindset that I had. And I went into the recovery process, you know, with that understanding. Like, okay, they're saying, man is saying one thing, but I know that I can do above and beyond. So 
after the surgery was done, I remember waking up. I think it was, was it New Year's now? Because I remember I had the blueberry ice cream. Uh, <laughs> and I, I, I asked Dr. Andrews, I said, listen, um, when, when can I start moving, you know, my leg and so I can get my, my quad and hamstrings and stuff firing? He was like, well, Adrian, you know, you're literally just out of surgery. Um, so I, I would say don't try anything for the next, you know, we can have two weeks uh, trying to lift it or anything. I'm, I'm like, so will I damage anything? Or he was like, no, you're going to be in a brace. Everything should be good structurally. That ACL is, is tight. Um, but, you know, I don't think you're going to be able to do that right now. Yeah. And right when he said that, I started lifting my leg up. More like this. <laughs> you're like, you know? okay, cool. <laughs> as long like, as I know I'm not going to hurt it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was like, yeah. So it was like little things like that that I did to just get my muscles firing and, um, you know, I, I wanted to be ahead of the curve and every mark that they had set. Oh, yeah. this is usually when this person is able to walk. This is usually when they're able yeah. to put pressure on it. And I was just like, I believe something totally different. <laughs> it seems like your mindset carries pr pretty much everything throughout your career yeah. from even being a kid. It was like you've had this mindset. And it also seems that it's kept you grounded into who you are as a person. So has there ever been things like, media coaches anything that have tried to come at you and challenge you that you felt like you've had to overcome because that is one thing in the spotlight in any field but especially in athletics mm -hmm. media everyone's coming for your throat at all time how you're playing on the field what you're doing off the field your injury are you as quick as you used to be mm -hmm. has that been a struggle or do you feel like because of your mindset because of your faith you've been able to you know power through uh I've been able to power through, you know, um, but I, I know it's because of my faith, right? Um, there's only been one time that I, I felt disrespected and felt like a coach was challenging me. And um, this was right before I left Minnesota. I tore my meniscus, I tore 90% of my meniscus um, at a home game the first year we played in, in the new stadium in Minnesota. and. They they pretty much was like, well, the season is over, you know, because I think it was like week three or four. And I was like, no, just, you know, just put me on just the injured reserve. And yeah. I feel like I, I can come back if we have a chance, you know, make it to the playoffs. So long story short, you know, the odds again, I overcame the odds. And, and I was able to come back and we were playing, I think we played the Colts. That's what we played. And we needed to win out. Like we had like point some percent chance, but any <laughs> chance that's the mentality I have. You know what? I'm I'm, I'm mm -hmm. right with it. And uh, we ended up losing that game. I came back out there, and you know, and I, I played decent. Didn't really play too well. You know, has been had been a while, and then that pretty much eliminated us from the you know the playoff tensions. Um, and the next week, the coach wanted me to play again. And I was like, coach. I just came back from tearing. I just came back. It's my first game. We have no chance to make the playoffs. Why would I get out there and, and risk hurting myself? Yeah. And it was, uh, was that 16? Yeah, 15, 15, 16. And my contract was up too, you know? So I could have easily been like, you know, I'm going to shut it down and just, you know, whatever, recover. That's not my mentality. Yeah. And then, um, and, um, he challenged me. He was like, well, I feel like if you was able to play last week, then you're able to come come out and play now. And it's like, I would do that if we really had a chance to make it to the playoffs, but we don't. And I'm not going to go out here and, you know, risk hurting myself for a pointless game. You right. know? And uh, he was like, well, I, I just rather you had not played, you know, the last game and this, that, and another. And it just, it, that's the first time my coach has really just rubbed me wrong with challenging me when it comes to what I've been doing since I was seven, playing, you know, the game that I love. Well, that's the thing with uh, NBA and NFL contracts as well. And we've had this discussion on the show. The kind of manipulation that some coaches will use on players, whether mm -hmm. they have an injury clause, whether they don't, um, because certain money is not guaranteed mm -hmm. for NFL players, but in my mind, it's never made sense to me because it is such so much more of a violent sport than the NBA. Yeah. And every NBA contract is guaranteed. Yeah. So you you get that money regardless. 
you know what I mean? And yeah. so that has to also probably mess with your mind a bit when you're on the field, knowing like if I get injured, and especially players who aren't superstars, mm -hmm. they could just be gone, that's it. Yeah. And that's the end of their career. Yeah. That's their last chance. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And that's what rubbed me so wrong, because here I am, the face of the franchise. Right. You know, I done scratch back when your staff and your professionals yeah. have told you that, you know what, he's not going to be able to make it back in time, and he's y'all should just sit him. I scratch back because that's the love I have for the game. Yeah. And you're going to disrespect me like that? Like, I was, I was through with him after that. I was like, man, all right, man, whatever. That was the one that stood out to you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one right there. I never felt that And that was your last season there, yeah? My last season there, yep. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Well, we'll have to see where your next season is. I'm just going to put it out there. We'll see. I'm sure the fans would be super excited <laughs> to see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Uh, beyond football, you've done a couple of things. You've done Dance with the Stars, uh, mm -hmm. exhibition, boxing match. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything else fun planned in those kind of worlds? Any reality tv mm -mm. you know what i had something going before to like literally today i i had to cancel it well i put my name in the hat because it was like hey would you be interested in doing this show and i'm just like man i've watched it a couple times like wait can you give us any indication yeah it's okay because <laughs> <laughs> I, I i told her to put my name out the hat now because this our schedule is gonna be crazy and i wouldn't be able to do it but it's the um like the little special forces. I was gonna say you would be really good on that show. Yeah, I was watching that, I was like, man, I'm about to be locked in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I gotta be locked in, you know, cause I watched yeah. the episode, I was like, shoot, okay. Yeah, there's gonna be some, you know, some challenging things, but right. I, I, know, I know I can do it, but. It's, it's and a, your it's mindset a is to compete in literally anything that you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, even if fear is involved, you know, just yeah. like, yeah, I've never done that before, but. I, you know, so guys will it maybe here in the future, that'll yeah. be something that I can be a part of. Maybe when you officially retire, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. The show's yeah. going to be around. Yeah, I think, I think it'll, it'll be it. around. But we got too much going on with our boys. We got baseball, we got track, uh, seven on seven. And me and a wife, our um, baby girl, Bella, she's seven months. So oh, I'm just wow. Like, yeah. yeah, so it's a big commitment. So I'm just like, oh, let me just... Just wait out. Just wait a little bit. Yeah, know, and, and uh, see what happens. So hold it you know, down for the fam a bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But who knows? There's other opportunities that could possibly, you know, pop up. That, you know, if if it's something interesting enough, you know, I'll let you know. Cool. We'll definitely have to see. Yeah. On Cards Like Club, we also like to do some buzzer beater questions. Okay. Cool. So, name your ideal food and drink combo while sitting courtside. Okay, food and drink, I would say um, like steak and chicken nachos. Ste oh, okay, so. Nachos. Steak and chicken on the nachos. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That sounds pretty good with jalapenos, you know, maybe some pico, okay. sour cream for sure. All right. Um, and then drink would probably be like water or something or alcoholic beverage, okay. of course. But I'll probably have both, maybe water and then maybe um, a gin and tonic. Smart. Just keep you, keep you grounded with the water. Yeah yeah. 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 Who was one person dead or alive that you would love to sit courtside with? Um, Michael Jackson. Uh, before Michael Jackson, um, Yahshua. Yahweh. Okay, I was going to say, yeah. 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 That would be awesome, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you would have, well, it'd be, it'd be actually kind of funny watching basketball, but. Yeah. yeah. Like you would have so many questions to ask, I'm assuming, yeah, right? Tons. What would be the first one? Can I get a pass? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, a pass into heaven? Yeah, like, okay. come on, like, let me, let me, let me go up there with you. Like, me, push my ticket right now, if you don't mind. Can you just let me know if I'm going to be joining you in our next life, or do I still have some work to do? <laughs> Where am I at? Where's my scorecard? Mm -hmm. <laughs> And what is one event in history, it could be a sporting event or other, that you would have loved to have been courtside for? You get that front row seat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Event. We've had some people say, like, landing on the moon. Did they land on the moon? No, We've had other people say, you know, game six. Yeah. They didn't land on the moon, though. <laughs> no? No. 
I would say. Where's the video? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the live stream? There's so many things about that, you know. <laughs> Footprints wrong, like everything. It's like, I seen. You could also um, ask God that. I know. Yeah. Huh? I, I seen an interview with a guy, and NASA was like, uh, we, we destroyed that technology, um, you know, years ago. What? <laughs> so you got to the you got to the moon, then you destroyed that technology to get back up there. Make that make sense? Like it's literally <laughs> on. It's captured. On Is this the your video. top conspiracy that you think about? Uh, I would say one of them. So one event yeah. in history. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, there's so many great events, man. I would say probably. Michael Jackson halftime show. Um, what year was it? The one where they did the We Are the World. Uh, he, when he performed that song, that would have been pretty awesome to be. What year was that? I think it was in San Fran. It was the outdoor stadium for sure. But just one of his concerts live, not course side, but field side. That. Yeah. Um, that that that, that would be. Pretty, pretty awesome. Have you seen, this is totally random, I don't even know if this will stay in, the clip of him where he's singing and then he fires his, like, somebody while he's sing, while he's performing. Have you seen that clip? No. It's probably the funniest <sighs> Michael Jackson clip I've ever seen. He says, job gone. He's singing it because he's <laughs> trying to do the, what's it called? It's not the hook, it's like the, the breakdown. Uh, uh, okay. And, and he was playing the wrong music and he literally fired, it's, I will try to find it yeah, find and show it you. Me. It's, you'll, it, it seems like you're a huge Michael Jackson fan. Yeah. Um, maybe the funniest video I've ever seen mm-hmm. of him. No, but check that out. It's hilarious. It's really funny. Yeah. Um, Adrian, thank you so much for sitting down with us on Courtside here today. Let everybody know where they can find you, what to look out for. Um, and also just what advice you have for young athletes coming up right now. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm on Instagram at Adrian Peterson. Um, you can also check out um, our foundation, the ANA Peterson Family Foundation. We'll be doing some stuff here coming up soon, maybe some camps as well. Um, but you know, my advice for you know college students that's looking to, or high school that's looking to, you know, make it in your profession, whether it's football, life in general. Whatever, whatever field it is that you you desire, um, the number one ingredient for me was having faith. And I believe faith without work is void. You know, um, making your, the things and your visions known, you know, write them out, you know, um, write them out, put them on your mirror where it's something, it's something that you see every day and you're constantly reminded of it. You know, you always have it here, but there's nothing like seeing the goals that you want to accomplish right in front of you. So I would suggest doing that. Understanding that as individuals, we were created to be able to accomplish anything we put our mind to, no matter who believes in us, your mom, your dad, your cousin, uncle, teacher, whatever. These people might not believe in you, but if you believe in yourself and you understand that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, and you continue to put one foot in front of the other and whatever adversity you, you that comes your way, understand that we will fall down, you just gotta get up and keep pushing. And you get out what you put in. I know that firsthand. There was years in the NFL where I knew my off season, my off season wasn't as hard as the 2012 off season. I got out what I put in. It might've been 1300 yards, but it wasn't 2000. <laughs> so just knowing anything you do in life in general, in general, you get out what you put in. Keep God first, believe, believe in yourself. I don't care who doubts you, believe in yourself, believe in yourself, and you you will accomplish your goals. That's awesome. Peace. Thank you, yep, appreciate right. it. Yep. <laughs>